We're back. Looking like everybody is better this time. I don't know what is up with show, but thank God today's our last day and we're done with it. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to mute you and we'll get started. I'm going to go kind of quick with it. Hold on, Emmy, I'm going to come back to you. Um, just in case we do get messed up with the internet again, then we can go quickly and be done. Emmy? Um, do we have any Zoom calls next week? Nope, today's the last one. Okay, for all of our teachers? Just for me, I don't know about the others, but I'm pretty sure you don't have any next week at all. Okay, I'm gonna go through and tell you guys about that in just a minute, okay? All right, so subtracting decimals, let me repeat what I said because it was breaking up before. When you do adding or subtracting, you have to line up your decimals. So you'll see that they'll give you one like this, where it has nine tenths and 78 hundredths, and you have that empty spot above the eight. Anytime you see that empty spot, go ahead and just put a zero there. And make sure you take your time and you're double checking your work because everybody knew how to do it the other day. It was just that you were going a little too quickly and messing up, okay? So once you get your decimals lined up and you put that zero there if needed, you just subtract. So you can't do zero minus eight, so that's where we borrow. We make this a 10, and we make this an eight, and then we just subtract. 10 minus eight is two, eight minus one, I mean, sorry, eight minus seven is one, and then we put our decimal, so we have 12 hundredths of a meter. So that's how much farther she went when she jumped. Okay, so that's it. It's really, really simple. So I'm gonna do some practice ones with you and show you, um, even though you guys are like one of the smartest classes I've ever had, I don't think you really need much practice. Um, And then I will um, go through and talk about some of the stuff you're gonna be doing for the rest of this week. And then we'll talk a little bit about um end of the year stuff so let me clear this so next if you have one like this it's so super simple eight tenths minus three tenths line up your decimal eight minus three is five you get five tenths remember the zero there is kind of optional for me if you don't want to put it you don't have to okay so that one is like super super simple and if you miss it i'm going to be quite concerned Let's do this one, 69 hundredths minus 52 hundredths. Straightforward, all we do is put our decimal down and then we subtract. Nine minus two is seven, six minus five is one. We get 17 hundredths. There's no borrowing there. There's no empty spaces. It's just regular old subtracting. Now look at this one, 73 hundredths minus four tenths. That's what I was saying a minute ago where you're gonna have that empty space below the three. Don't shift that four over because then you're gonna get a completely wrong answer. That's why it's important that you line up your decimals. So we're gonna put that zero there and then we can just subtract. Three minus zero is three. Seven minus four is three. Put your decimal, 33 hundredths, okay? Let's do another one with the borrowing, even though I know you guys know how to borrow. Let's do 58 hundredths minus 39 hundredths. Okay, so we can't do eight minus nine, so we need to borrow. We need to make the eight into an 18 and the five into a four. Then we can subtract. Put your decimal down. 18 minus nine is nine, four minus three is one, so you get 19 hundredths. Okay, so super, super, super easy today. Um, Let me give you one to try, and then, or a couple to try, and then I'll go on to science and some other stuff you need to know for this week. Do these couple right here, 95 hundredths minus 54, hundredths and 75 hundredths minus two tenths. Do those two for me. 
and then I'll give you the answer and you can check yours and see how you're doing with it. And then I want to talk to you guys about some stuff. So today you're going to do um, a homework grade on this. I am going to check it, you know, to see if you got it right, because you do need to know if you got it right or not. So that's how you're going to know if you understand. So I'm going to do that. And then tomorrow you have some review and Friday you have the open book test. Please remember it's open book. Everybody should be able to make a hundred on it, especially if you're keeping up with your work this week and you're keeping up with the corrections that I make on it, then you're going to be a-okay. All right, so let's do these. You should be done by now. On the first one, five minus four, look at my decimal first. Five minus four is one. Nine minus five is four. So we get 41 hundredths. Okay, and then on the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and put my zero here just because I like to make sure I have everything lined up correctly. Five minus zero is five. Seven minus two is four. So I get 45 hundredths. No, it's not four, it's five. I don't know why the book is telling me that. Hold on. It's five. The book, I guess, has a typo. That's weird. 55. So let me go ahead and show you this, too. You can check it by doing 55 hundredths plus 20 hundredths. Yeah, so 55. That's why it's important to double check because I was copying out of the book when I knew that wasn't correct. Okay. Um, let's talk about what you're going to do um, in math first and then I'll talk about science. On Friday, you have an open book test. I've already made it. Now, everybody listen carefully, but I'm about to tell you with the open book. Shobi has been giving me problems when I upload documents. Um, I tried for 30 minutes the other day to put your test in, and every single time I upload it, it puts it out of order. I tried and I tried and I tried for about 30 minutes and I gave up. So the math test is not in order. I can't get it to go in order. So just make sure you pay attention to the numbers and the directions when you go through. I looked at it and it shouldn't be a problem, and I'll try again before Friday to see if I can make it work but I tried forever and it just will not work. So it's out of order. It shouldn't be that big of a deal though. Um, tomorrow you're gonna do some review with decimals. On the test, I basically copied your classwork. So if you're keeping up with your classwork and you're um, doing it every day and you're checking it when I check it every day and you're keeping it on show me, then you should be good. You can go back on Shobi and look to help you on Friday. You can use your book to help you. You can use notes to help you. Any of that to help you on Friday. I want to give you the best chance to make an A on this test. So um, that's on Friday. The assignment on Friday is always due Monday, but try to get it done Friday because I have to have his report card grades done by Tuesday. Um, with that being said, I'm going to extend the um, makeup work deadline until Monday just because I need to kind of have time for the people who have missed this week to make up too. So Monday at five o'clock will be the last time to turn any makeup work in. So if you have any, you need to be working on it over this weekend because I've got to get your grades in. And if you don't turn in this work, it's not going to be an accurate report card. And if you have a ton of missing work, I can't do your report card at all. So if you have a ton of missing work, you know who you are. I've already talked to you. If you have a couple of missing assignments, just get those in to me. Another thing I wanna mention is that you guys can go back and redo these assignments that you're not doing well on. All you have to do is redo it and then just tell me, hey, I redid it, go grade it. A couple of you did it yesterday, and then I went through yesterday afternoon and I graded it. And if you go back, you can see what your grade is. 
I'm not even, you know, doing half credit points. I'm giving you all the credit back if you do it. So go back and if you have any that you don't um, like your grade on or you didn't do well on, then go through and redo it. That will give you the opportunity to get your grade higher for report cards. If you did it yesterday already, I went through and I already checked it and it's already on. Um, it's really too much work for me to go through the hundred students I have and figure it out. So if you guys can just go back through and look at it. And if you want me to make a list of the most important things you can redo, you can um, message me and I can try to do that for you. For example, if you redo a test you made a bad grade on, it's gonna count way more than a classwork assignment that you did badly on. So if you didn't do well in tests, they count more, I would go for that first. So let me take a couple of your questions and then we'll talk about some more end of the year stuff real quick. Kylie. Um, <clears throat> this isn't just in math, it's in science too, right? Yeah, anything for me. Okay. Now I can't speak for the other teachers because that's their class and everything, but for me, math and science, anything you need to or want to redo, I'm totally okay with that. Um, let's see, some of you had your hands up, but put them down, I'm not sure. I see Braylon. Braylon. Um. Why can't we see teacheries? It always closes down at the end of the year so Mr. Robbie can get grades done. So that's the reason. Um, if you message me though, a couple people have and I can tell you your grades for you. Okay. If you want to know your grades, y'all message I'm getting me afterwards. And I'll I have the app, so I keep getting notifications for it. And so I know what science and math is, but I don't get to look at all my grades inside of it. Yeah, it's cut off for now. But if you guys want to know, I can tell you in a little bit. Um, let's see, I have a couple more. Hold on, Christian, let me get to you. Christian. Um, so, in, other than the classwork, are you going to post any more work? Like yeah, so on Monday, everybody listen up to this real quick. I, probably on Sunday, I'm going to post it. I'm gonna post a little math review of stuff we've done this year and it should be multiple choice. I want you guys to do, it's not a grade, it's just for me to see what maybe we need to work on at the beginning of next year in sixth grade. Some stuff that maybe we've forgotten, that kind of stuff. It's not a grade at all, it's just kind of to see how ready you are for next year. Yeah, I mean like any more graded stuff other than the classwork for this. You'll have tests on Friday? Um, yeah, okay. Oh, that, yeah. Um, I think that's all the questions I see. Okay, so let me um, write down some key things I want you to remember on here. So this is our last Zoom, so no more math or science Zoom. We're done with that. Tomorrow you'll have review for math and science and then um, Friday, you'll have the open book test for both. The yearbook orders are due Friday, I believe. I might be wrong on that. I'm pretty sure they're due Friday, and you can go on to the Timmerman website to get it. Also, the book fair ends on Sunday. Oops, hold on. Book fair in Sunday. They're still trying to figure out how you're going to come get your stuff. So we haven't just been not telling you. We just don't know yet with all the um, different safety things you have to do now with not having more than a couple people in a room at a time. So we will get all your stuff to you and we'll get an email out to your parents soon on how we're going to do that. Um, I cleaned out my room yesterday for summer. So all my stuff is cleaned out. And I'll try to post it. I put, took a video of it. I'll post it on class discussion so you can see how bare the room looks now. It's sad. It looks like I just quit or something. So I had to take all my personal stuff and hide it because I don't want the little kids in summer, you know, taking my Sharpies or anything. So I'll have to send you a video. It's really sad looking. Um, all that's left for me to do for summer is to get your stuff together. So I don't know if they're going to let you come get it or if I'm going to pack it up for you. 
but there's really not a whole lot left. I looked around. Most of you got your own stuff. Still a few textbooks in there, which kind of concerns me because I don't know what you're using at home. I do know some of you have your own textbooks at home too, but I'm hoping that that's the case and not somebody just doesn't have them. Um, then I will get you a list on what to bring back to school too. If you have any Clark's cash, that'd be cool, just because I need to reuse it next year. If you could bring that back, um, and then your agenda and your workbooks and all that kind of stuff. Please, please, please don't forget anything. Um, and I'll send a list out to you. I made a list with all the teachers so that we can make sure you got everything you needed to bring back. And I think that's pretty much it. So next week, you won't have any graded assignments for me. It ends on Friday. All missing work is due Monday. By five. So by 5 p.m., that's horrible handwriting, sorry. It's due by 5 p.m. because I've got to get these grades in. Mr. Rami is a stickler about these report card grades because we have to do term six, then we have to do the entire school year, and then he has to do the semester grades for middle school, and it's just a lot more work. So I have to get those in. So I need you guys to have all missing work in by Monday. And so this weekend, I'm going to hopefully Friday nights and another list out of anything you're missing, and we can get that done. Um, today, if you notice on science, you have a study guide attached. Please use that study guide on your test Friday. It literally has all the questions that you're going to need on it that I would normally go over in class. So just use it. Honestly, it's just like a worksheet at this point. You get to use anything you need. So please use it. I'm giving you every opportunity. Um, I think that's about it. Let's look at today's science stuff just so I can know that I went over it with you guys. And then I'll take any end of the year kind of questions you have. Um, I hope you guys get to come inside because I'd like to see you again. But I don't know what the rules will be and all that stuff. I do have a little end of the year surprise for you. So if I don't get to have you come in the classroom, I will give it to you when you're there. So make sure you get it from me when you come or your parents come. All right. Um, let's look at page C80 in science. I'm going to write it right here. C80. This is actually the easier lesson of the chapter. I think the other two are a little bit more difficult. You know what a climate is. Climate is if we average the weather all year long in one place. We could say the climate of a tropical rainforest is going to be hot and wet. Microclimate is a small area. So we can say that a wooded park has a microclimate and even a parking lot can have a microclimate. On your test, you'll see that um, that is a question. I'll go over the study guide with you in a second. So basically that's all you need to know in C80. And then if you look at C81, what you need to know is that depending on your latitude and your distance from the equator, that's kind of how you determine your climate. The farther away from the equator are, the colder it's going to get. That's pretty self-explanatory, I think. And if you turn the page world climate, that's almost kind of like the biomes we did when we spent all that time doing biomes and biome brochures. Um, ocean currents can affect the climate, making it um, more moist and cool. Um, the shape of the land can affect it, whether you have a mountain or it's flat land. No two places on Earth have the exact same climate. They're grouped into polar, mountain, temperate, tropical, and desert. So it's really similar to the biomes, and they kind of go hand in hand. Climate change, we talked about that a lot. Um, climate change is just the world temperature getting warmer or cooler over time. Um, global warming is something you hear about all the time, and that's what they're kind of talking about here. El Nino is something that you might hear about. El Nino is a short-term climate change. So every two to 10 years, we get this climate change that is different because of the Pacific Ocean changing currents. And um, 
it could go from a normally wet area being really dry or a normally dry area being really wet. And it's just a change every um, two to 10 years. You need to know that. And then turn the page, human effect climate. We know that greenhouse effect is where we produce too much carbon dioxide and it gets trapped in our atmosphere and it can heat the earth causing global warming. And that's basically all that is. So let me um, pull up Shobi on your screen real quick and let me go over this study guide with you. So if I pull up here, fourth grade, fifth grade, fifth grade science. Today you have 185, I mean, sorry, 85, which we just went over. And then the study guide. So know your vocabulary is the one thing that's always gonna be on there, you know that. On the vocabulary, it's not gonna be matching, it's gonna be those ones where it has a little blank and you fill it in the paragraph. You need to know that condensation happens in clouds. What they're gonna have is a little picture and it's going to be like water here, the sun, and then clouds and it'll say what's happening here well that's going to be evaporation happening because the sun is heating up the water and turning it from a liquid to a gas then they're going to say what's happening in the clouds and that's going to be condensation and then that's pretty much it and it's going to ask you what all of this is called and it's called the water cycle let me erase that because it'll stay on there so that's what the first couple mean um Atmosphere height is not measured by meteorologists. So it'll give you a list and it'll say, which one of these is not measured by meteorologists? Atmosphere height. They don't measure the height of the atmosphere. That's not something we see on the Weather Channel. Another one they're gonna give you is this. Let me draw it out for you. They're gonna give you a house. Then they're gonna give you a wooded area. And then they're gonna give you a parking lot with cars. That is what these are about. So it says if you go from your house to a wooded area, then it's gonna ask you what would happen to the temperature and the humidity. So if I go from the house to the wooded area, I'm gonna have a cooler weather and more humidity, okay? The cooler it is, the more humidity you're gonna have there. If you walk from the wooded area to the parking lot, it's going to get warmer with less humidity. And these are multiple choice and you can just pull the study guide up to give you your answers. If you walk from the, um, we did that one, hold on. Then it'll say, where is humidity the highest? It's gonna be in the wooded area. That's where humidity will be highest. And then one of the last questions is what are all of these called? They're all called microclimates, okay? So that's all it is pretty much. There's no open-ended questions where you have to write anything. Everything is multiple choice or putting the letter in the blank, that's it. You can use this, you can use your notes, you can use your book, you can use anything, okay? So that's about it. Um, if I remember any more end of the year stuff, I'll post it on Dojo. Please do the math assignment I'm going to put up this weekend just because I want to gauge where you're at and what we need to start next year with in sixth grade with Mr. Robbie. Um, and then if you want to, if you get bored, I'm going to put up some like brain teaser kind of riddle things. I know some of your parents are probably going to want to, you know, take Memorial Day off and hang out with you and that's fine too. But if you get bored, I'll have some stuff up and you guys can message me about your summer plans or whatever. I don't know what they kind of look like right now with all of this stuff going on. I don't really know if you can go anywhere. You can go to the beach now. That's open. But um, that's pretty much it. This is our last Zoom. If you guys can come see me next week, please do. I miss you guys. I'd like to see you again before the end of the year. And if you're doing summer care at Timmermint, I'll be there. Um, I'm not working with your age group except for art this year, but I will have you for art if you do come to summer extend or not extend the care but summer care um i'm going to be doing second and third grade reading and math i think so addie that might be your brother if you come um 
I will be doing art with the elementary one, so I will see you guys for art if you're there. Another thing I do want to remind you of real quick, summer reading and math. Miss Sutherland is in charge of your summer work because you'll have her next year. I've already talked to her and I think she's going to do it on Shobi, which is normally what middle school does. So she'll make a Shobi account for you if you're coming back next year. And I'll get all that information out to you. I'll get you the Shobi name and password and all that stuff. So if you are going to be coming back next year and you get your summer work, it will be on Shobi. So basically it'll be um, basically what we do now. You'll read and do questions and stuff. I don't think you do a book report. I think it's more questions and answers. And then math, Mr. Robbie will do. Miss Sutherland will have a reading camp and it's normally pretty fun. She does like crafty things too, which is fun. She'll do that this summer. So all that information will come to you soon. We're trying to plan all that right now, actually. So it'll be there. Just keep in mind, you will be on show for that stuff so she can check it. Um, but you guys are used to that now. I just don't want you to think summer's over and delete your show real quick next week. So just stay tuned and I'll get you all that. Um, I'm going to go unlock your math right now and you can watch me do it and make sure it's done fifth i went to fourth grade hold on fifth grade math you're doing page 279 six through ten i'm gonna go ahead and unlock it so it's ready and you guys can go ahead and start working on that i'm gonna unmute you if you have any questions and if you don't you guys are free to go miss um, clark yes uh, yeah. Um, when it talks about for one to five, uh, for science, uh -huh. for the third one, we talked about when it's not working. When the comet cools enough, large areas of Earth are ice peaks of ice or glaciers. Uh, would that be how the, the um, ice causes? What, causes? what question? Is, what number is it? It causes an ice age. Yeah. Number four, Addy? Three. Three. Oh, what causes ice age? Okay, so if it's ice, the temperature is going to do what? I said when the, when the climate cools enough, large areas of Earth are covered by sheets of ice or glaciers. Yeah, that's right. Anybody else have any questions? Well, I have a statement. Yeah. <laughs> um, don't don't mind that at all. Go ahead and reply. Jaden, say that again. Because I'm not going to be here next week. Well, summer work for y'all. You don't for us, but you might for your new school. I don't know. Check I'm it. Up here. But you don't for us. Oh. Well, I'm all right, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Um,